Welcome to the first video in our series that seeks to better understand the dynamics of predator, prey, interactions. Predators and prey are fundamental components of ecological systems. Predators exert pressures on prey populations, often influencing prey abundance and distribution. In turn, prey can shape predator populations, influencing their size and distribution. In this series, we're going to take a look at a set of models. Could you not do that, please? Okay. We're going to take a look at a set of Mo Stop. Mo mathematical models. Thank you. Look, I know mathematical models aren't really our forte in biology, but bear with me. We can do this. One of the earliest attempts to mathematically model predator-prey interactions came from Alfred Lotka and Vito Volterra in the 1920s. They were the originators of the Lotka-Volterra equations, which are now foundational tools for describing the cyclical nature of predator-prey dynamics. Alfred Lotka was actually a chemist, and his background in chemical kinetics influenced his approach to mathematical modeling. He took the concept of oscillatory behaviors observed in chemical systems, such as autocatalytic reactions, and applied them to biological systems. He used the cyclical pattern seen in the interactions between parasitoids and their hosts to serve as a conceptual framework for his equations. Vito Volterra, on the other hand, was a mathematician. He independently developed predator-prey equations around the same time as Alfred. Vito observed fish populations in the Adriatic Sea during World War I, when fishing activity in the region decreased due to the war. He noticed that as a result of the reduced fishing pressure, fish populations began to increase. I know, perhaps not super shocking, but his observation led him to propose a mathematical model to describe the interaction between a predator species and a prey species in an ecological system. Now, they probably never actually met each other. My boy Alfred lived in Baltimore, whereas Vito lived in Rome. And it was at a time in human history when intercontinental travel was a bit fraught. I mean, the transatlantic telephone wasn't even established until the late 1920s, and it's unlikely that they would have had access to such an innovation. And, and even if they did, why would they call each other to chat? So, I, okay, I'm getting off track. So, the Latka Volterra equations. These equations assume a simple system with one prey species and one predator species where they interact with each other in a continuous fashion over overlapping generations. The prey population is modeled by an equation that considers two opposing forces, exponential growth and predation. In the absence of predators, the prey population would grow indefinitely at some rate, which we would call R. R is the prey's intrinsic growth rate. After this, we have the variable H, which is the prey's population density. However, predation acts as a balancing force, which reduces the prey's population. This is represented as negative alpha multiplied by HP, where alpha is a constant variable that reflects the prey's vulnerability to predation, and P is the predator's population density. These opposing forces then combine into the prey population equation. dH over dT equals RH minus alpha HP. Here, dH over dT represents the rate of change in the prey population over time. So, the change in prey population over time is determined by the intrinsic growth rate of the prey population, which is a function of the growth rate and the prey density, minus the mortality caused by predation, which depends on both prey density and the predator population density. The predator population, on the other hand, depends entirely on prey for growth. Predators reproduce at a rate proportional to the number of prey that they consume, represented by a variable c which is known as the conversion efficiency, or the rate at which predators can kill prey and convert the energy that they get from that prey into offspring, who then become new predators. 
H is the prey population density, and P is the predator population density. Simultaneously, predators experience a natural mortality rate, which we express as the variable D. These all go together into an equation as follows. DP over DT equals C multiplied by HP minus D multiplied by P. Here, DP over DT represents the rate of change in the predator population over time. So the change in predator population over time is determined by their ability to convert prey into new predators, multiplied by prey density and predator density minus the death rate of predators multiplied by predator density. When these two equations are graphed together over time, they can look something like this. The Lakta Volterra model provides a foundational tool for understanding predator prey dynamics, but it does come with some limitations. For example, the model assumes that predators and prey respond instantly to changes in each other's populations, ignoring natural time lags such as reproduction or growth delays. It also allows prey populations to grow unchecked in the absence of predators, failing to account for environmental constraints like food shortages or carrying capacities. The model also assumes that predators always hunt at a fixed rate, overlooking factors like predator satiation or prey defenses and cryptic behavior. Additionally, it simplifies ecosystems by focusing on just one predator and just one prey system, neglecting the complexities of multiple species interactions. Finally, it predicts endless population cycles without stabilizing or amplifying forces, which doesn't really match what we often see in nature. Despite these limitations, the Lotka-Volterra model remains a powerful tool for understanding the core dynamics of predator-prey interactions. While the model often needs to be refined or expanded for specific situations, its elegance and foundational principles continue to shape ecological sciences. In many ways, the Lotka-Volterra equations represent the genesis of ecological modeling and laid the groundwork for more complex models and equations that followed. Understanding the Lotka-Volterra equations isn't just about learning math, it's about gaining a deeper appreciation of life, which ultimately allows us to develop better tools to conserve and manage it. Well, that's enough math for one day. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.